Hello class. Rather than talking only about the course syllabus, because uh, it is pretty much the same with regard to the rules that apply to all, all online courses, and taking into account the fact that uh, we have uh, worked uh, for one semester and one course together, I also wanted to discuss more about the nature of the course that we are going to have together this term. So um, it is uh, English for specific purposes or shortly ESP and I'm sure you all have an idea about what this uh, course is, what this abbreviation is and maybe even some of you have taught ESP so far. Uh, with my modest Albanian, I would translate it as English per celime specifike, and uh, in uh, Makedonski it would be Angliski za specifični celi ili Angliski za specifični nameni, but basically the uh, term means that this is English not for any other general disciplines, with the difference to general English, but English for specific professions, like English for medical workers, English for lawyers, English for business people, English for political sciences, etc. During the course, and I think it's in our first lesson, you will uh, read more and we will discuss more about uh, the division of ESP and actually um, what kind of courses exist in the frames of ESP. But generally the aim of the course is that you develop um, an understanding about the factors that led to the emergence of ESP um, as um, a different field from general English. Then um, to uh, be more knowledgeable and to be able to apply one specific tool which is the most prominent, the most important feature for all ESP courses and that is needs analysis. So you will first read what needs analysis is and then create your own needs analysis and practice it. Also, um, it is very important to create your own and adapt the ESP materials based on the nature of the course that you are going to teach. Develop assessment procedures that are appropriate for ESP, which necessarily shouldn't be very different from the assessment procedures that you have already learned and applied for your other courses. And finally, prepare a concrete syllabus, lesson and evaluation assessment plan based on the needs assessment and genre analysis. What is genre analysis? We'll also have a specific task and topic devoted to genre analysis. But needs assessment together with uh, genre analysis is a distinctive feature of ESP. And we have mentioned something about this uh, during the writing course, if you remember. And then we had a definition about what is a genre and what types of genre there are. In ESP uh, we have again this phenomenon because every field has its specific genre and you know well that uh, the language that medical workers use is pretty much different than the language that lawyers use and uh, in uh, ESP this is very important because that particular genre characterizes the whole discipline and you, as a language professional, must take care that that genre is respected and all the characteristics of that genre are included in your teaching ESP. Long ago, or not so much long ago, I mean even um, maybe 10 years ago, 
English for specific uh, purposes was treated as uh, terminology and uh, there was a view that any expert in the field, let's say a business person or a lawyer or a medical worker that um, was an expert in the particular profession and was fluent in English could teach ESP. And uh, in practice there were cases like that. So experts in the field taught ESP and they taught it as pure terminology. They would burden the students with 100 vocabulary items and make, made them learn these vocabulary items by heart. And at the end, you know what it is like when uh, you know vocabulary passively, but you are not able to use it for communicative purposes. And then those ESP, ESP uh, people could, for example, read texts, like for medical workers, for doctors, it would be fine because uh, more or less they are familiar with these terms in Latin. But then when it came to using the language, when it came to exchange opinions with colleagues uh, at conferences and at seminars, then they, they, they would get stuck. And with years, now it is clear, and we'll um, learn about this more in the history of development of ESP, that now um, it is clear to everybody that ESP is a part of applied linguistics and it can be taught by a language expert or by a language expert in um, cooperation and in partnership with an expert from the profession and that would be an ideal ESP course when there is a cooperation between a language teacher and a professional from, from the field. Depending on where this uh, ESP teaching happens or whether you teach ESP for academic purposes like what we do here at university where the needs of students are not realistic but they are only perceived. Students can just assume at this point why they will need ESP and they can state that in uh, the needs analysis assessment. So at this point, this ESP is for academic purposes and it is uh, very different from ESP for occupational purposes where uh, we would teach that course to, to uh, people that are already employed, have some practice and know why they need the language. But we'll talk about this in more details later. As to the syllabus, uh, there is one book and, and, um, and the course reader. Um, there is one book, you have it on the syllabus, which is uh, uploaded on Libri. And this book is almost a Bible of ESP. It's Dudley Evans and Maggie Lee St. John from 1998. It's called Developments in Ang English for Specific Purposes, published by Cambridge University Press. And it would be good if you come across this book to buy somewhere. Other than that, I would um, scan uh, certain parts of the book and send them, post them on Libri. Besides that, I will also post different articles that are maybe newer from the field of ESP. And that is regarding the materials for the ESP course. You are already familiar with the technical requirements because you are now experienced Libre users and then the grading criteria published at this moment are as usual participation in online discussions based on roles with 20% needs analysis 20% genre analysis 10% course design plan 10% and sample lesson plan 10% 
Maybe um, as the course develops, depending on the course dynamics, some of these criteria will be changed, but you will be informed about them in a timely manner. Uh, then you will also have to write two reflection papers and one course assessment plan which counts to 100% in total. The other policies regarding Libri are already familiar to you. Minimal, minimum checking on Libri twice per week. Then um, you know that you should also respect the deadlines which are posted and the course calendar is um, also uploaded on Libri for the first week. It is all included in the syllabus and um, I believe that it will go smooth and we won't have any bigger obstacles. As always, I encourage you to contact me via regular email, via webmail or the email on Libri anytime you, you need something related to the course. That would be all for me as um, to start with and uh, we'll meet each other again. Thank you.